Lowermost Jr. is in the chat asking us about our take on DeSantis and Trump. I've actually got an article about both of them I brought to the stream. If yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do it then, man. Let's go ahead and do it. You want to talk about it? Let's go ahead right. and talk about it, man. Okay. Uh, DeSantis come out and hammered Trump over because Trump has made some rather pro Disney comments, and I did not realize this. Uh, I didn't know this either. We were talking about this this morning. I said, "Did you know Trump made these pro Disney comments?" And I had to go look it up, and sure enough, in April, he scorched the earth of Ron DeSantis over Disney. And I this was like, April what? or last April? Uh, no, last month, April eighteenth, last month. Okay. And uh, so, well, let's just go back, and we'll just look. And this is what Trump said. It was the New York Post. Uh, does DeSantis? is being absolutely destroyed by Disney. His original PR plan fizzled, so now he's going back with a new one in order to save face, the 73-year-old former president wrote on the messaging platform. Disney's next move, this is a quote, Disney's next move will be the announcement that no more money will be invested in Florida because of the governor. In fact, they could even announce a slow withdrawal or sale of certain properties or the whole thing. Watch, Trump added, that could be killer. And then he goes on to talk about it being a political stunt. Look, I, I, I honest to God, truly believe that, that, I mean, the one thing, I like, I like what DeSantis has done towards Disney. I oh, do. I do too. You know, I, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's one I'm, I'm not going to side with Trump on, to be honest with you. I think that, I'm going to be honest here, I think DeSantis is better at culture war stuff than Trump. Uh, I will say this. I think DeSantis does a better job of not, like, for example, not getting involved with, like, celebrity feuds and things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but, cul- but culture war stuff, DeSantis, I think, is a, a little better than Trump on culture war stuff. Now, when it comes to national politics stuff, that that's different right there. Right. And let me see if I can play this clip because DeSantis was on with Eric Boland on a uh, good number of people uh, to be able to do that. Um, I, I do believe that there's a limit uh, to the number of voters that would consider the former president at this point. I mean, we've seen it, um, you know, in Florida, we've seen it in places like Georgia. I think that there are some people that don't like Biden, uh, but they would like another option. So I think my ceiling is higher in a general election. Uh, and I made the, the pledge to people, you know, if you nominate me through this process, uh, then set your watch to January 20th, 2025. High noon, I'll be there taking the oath. I'll get it done. We'll make it happen. Yes, sir. Um, but there's a, a little obstacle on the way there, and you pointed it out. You still have to beat Donald Trump first. And right now the polls have him you know, up by a substantial margin. How do you plan on closing that gap? Well, first of all, I haven't been a candidate, and so I've been doing my my job in Florida. We just conducted the most effective legislative session, I would argue, in the modern history of the Republican Party. If you look at all the things that we were able to to take uh, that were ideas that conservatives have wanted for a lot of time and bring it into reality and put it into law. So we're very proud of that, but that had been my focus. Now we're going to be launching a blitz. We're going to be in these early states. We're really going to be all over the country uh, bringing this message uh, to, to our voters. And I think at the end of the day, um, most of our voters obviously appreciate uh, a lot of the things President Trump did. I do. I mean, he's been attacking me a lot, but I still give him credit uh, for the things that he did well, especially, you know, with um, uh, with the economy in the first three years. Uh, but they also understand that you need someone that can serve two terms. Uh, you need somebody that's going to be able to win and win big. And so I think we have a lot of folks that will consider uh, somebody like me who has proven to be very strong, uh, you know, I'm standing up to people like Disney, and with due respect to the former president, he's taking Disney's side in this now. Um, I'm standing against Disney. I'm standing for the kids. I'm standing for the parents. I don't think these kids should be sexualized. We took away their self-governing status, and I'm not backing down one inch from that. I think our voters want to see somebody that can fight, but also somebody that can win. Okay, so, I mean, that's what he said right there. 
You know, he's not going to back down from Disney, but I I was surprised to see Trump's comments on that entire Disney situation. And I've seen some other Republicans hitting at DeSantis for taking on Disney. And I'm like, like I think Nikki Haley looks like shit. Yeah, she's talking she about um, Disney pack she, up and move to where? where move to South, South Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. And I'm like, do you not realize, are, are you that disengaged with the Republican room right now that you don't realize exactly how conservative Americans feel about Disney right now? Man, we can't Disney stand is them. just so ultra woke, man, that it's really gotten to the point to where parents actually have to watch what's on Disney Plus first before they actually let their kids actually watch it. Disney has become the entertainment version of the NBA. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, that's a good they, that's a good they, comparison. They, they've gone ultra woke, and aside from everything involved with the wokeness, there's nobody that drops to both knees like Disney when it comes to China. Yeah, I mean they do whatever China wants. <laughs> Look, we just talked about this yesterday. Look what they did with the Little Mermaid. They are hiding the fact that Haley Bailey is black on a Chinese poster. Right. I mean, it, it's wild. I know a lot of people that have boycotted allowing their their kids to watch Disney. At least, at least the new Disney products. They still allow their kids to watch the old Disney the stuff. The classic stuff, yeah. You know, the original Star Wars movies and things like that. The prequels and 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 the in game prior Marvel stuff, but the new stuff they they are out on. They won't let their kids watch it. They won't take them to the the theater and spend that money anymore. Yeah, you know I got a buddy that's got four girls. That's a lot of box office money for Disney. And he told me he said we went to see every Disney thing opening day. He said I won't take them anymore. I won't do it. You know? you know, you know what, Rhodes? Um, Disney has been going down this path now. It's been quite a quite a while since since we actually had a Star Wars movie in a movie theater. Right. Now, the pace that Disney is going on, going super far left woke. I don't know exactly what's the next Star Wars movie in the movie theater. I believe that um they're gonna tr- try to take this next step. And actually, you know, having indoctrination stuff in the kids in a Star Wars movie. I'm not talking about like, I'm not talking about like, um, remember at the end of um, the Rise of Palpatine where the lady kissed another woman? Another lady. Which yeah. nobody really saw. I believe yeah. they're going to integrate it into the story this time. Like what they did with uh, Willow. Well, it wouldn't shock me it, if it's in... The acolyte that wouldn't shock me at all if it's in that. No, no, but I'm talking about like in in a movie theater. That's what I'm talking about. No, it wouldn't. That wouldn't shock me a bit. It It wouldn't wouldn't shock me at this point either. Yeah, they they've shown just from the people. If you watch Star Wars Celebration and you watch some of their writers and the people involved with Star Wars now that they bring up on on stage, I mean, it's just a complete. It's like a. It's like you stepped into an alphabet convention, essentially. It just is. Everybody's pink hair, purple hair. You know, you can tell they're probably lesbian. They're, you know, it's wild. I'm like, are you hiring anybody that's straight anymore? Yeah. At all? That, well, I can my 50 plus because all this shit. Hmm. I mean... When did Star Wars Rebels come out? 2014. There is a massive difference between Star Wars Rebels, which is a which is a Disney Star Wars show, yep. which I like. I just rewatched it. It's good. There is a massive difference between what they did with that show, which is good, and it's not woke, versus what they did with um. Now I said that the middle. The middle four episodes of uh, Clone Wars season seven was awful. That was with the uh, Mar- Martez Terrible. Marquez sisters, or whatever. Super yeah. woke. It was awful. They pushed that propaganda right there, but the last four episodes were epic. 
Right. And I gave that final season of um, Clone Wars, I gave it a B. The only reason I gave it a B is because you got to look at all 12 episodes. Right. Those le- middle four episodes were an F, the worst ever. The last the four last, episodes, all last time four great. Were a plus. <laughs> yeah. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. So. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, it's an agenda, and I understand. Look, before anything, and before any party, the one thing that is great about President Trump is he is a businessman, and he's going to look at things like. He's going to look at things like job creation, even if it is Disney. He's going to look at it and be like, this creates jobs in Florida. People go to work for this company. A lot of people. Because, you know, they canceled some big project they had, and 2,000 jobs just vanished down in Florida. Yeah, yeah. But I understand why Ron DeSantis did that, because many of the employees that were going to come work on that project were coming from California. Sorry, but I don't consider that a, a great big loss. I don't. All right? Uh, and there's a difference between what Ron DeSantis did in Florida versus what AOC did up in her district where she banged the drum for Amazon to not open up a distribution center there. She cost her district 25,000 25, jobs. Jobs, yeah. Uh and look, there's things that Amazon does I don't exactly like. They're pretty woke, too. They're pretty woke, too. But we, these were just warehouse jobs and things like that. You know? Um, this wasn't going to be people coming in to work. Look, they're already in, she was already in a woke district. So those people at least should be able to work. I mean, yeah. if they want to work, they should be able to yeah. work. But the you people know, in her district are clueless, man. You're talking They're about clueless. people coming into Florida that does not share the same ideals as the majority of citizens living in Florida. And yeah, it's a free country. But at the same time, I believe these businesses also know what they're doing when it comes to trying to get more red states to become more blue. 